regarding the Twitter scrape hack, etc., I've uh, cut off my video as well so that it doesn't uh, damage the quality of the screenshot itself. Um, essentially, as mentioned, so in this case, what we're doing is we're scraping the Twitter followers of a certain company. And uh, by scraping those followers, we're able to retarget them on a different platform with a certain counter offer. The profile that we're scraping at the given moment is called Marketa. And uh, by scraping them, uh, we're basically scraping followers of their offering. And their offering is a, uh, uh, like, a, I think it's a metal card or something along those lines. The reason as to why I came across their profile was because it was requested previously. I, like, I scraped it for a certain client. But the accuracy of the data, and that's the biggest problem, is around 50 to 60%. So I discarded the price and just sent the data for free at the end of the day. But you do get some good batches and some good profiles directly from, uh, directly from this. I'll just find the find one profile, just a second. So these are essentially all the followers. And then to do this, uh, what we use is two phantom buster applications. One is the Twitter follower extractor, and then we use the LinkedIn profile finder at the end of the day. I'm just looking for, like this guy, for instance, he's a follower of Marketa. This is his LinkedIn profile. And then this is his direct, sorry, this was his Twitter profile. And then this is his, direct LinkedIn profile at the end of the day. So what you're able to do is essentially retarget him, message him with like, a, I'd always suggest a question-based approach. So something along the lines of, hey, are you following blah, 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 etc. And then if there's a like a yes response, actually send out the, uh, the sales template itself, which is either a counter offer if you run a company that's offering something totally different or anything along those lines. Now to do this at the end of the day, um, what you do is, is you hop over to the Twitter follower collector. So I've already scraped it just to save time, essentially, to not bore you with the uh, loading times, etc. cetera. Uh, to set it up, you essentially plug in your Twitter session cookie. Now to plug in your Twitter session cookie, you right click on this. You've done this a million times by now, so I'm sure you guys can, like you guys already understand how it essentially works. You head over to network. I think, no, you head over to application and then you type in authorization. Bob, check, uh, Bob, uh, check the waiting room, Bob. Check the waiting room, please. Now, uh, after typing authorization token, uh, you just copy this value and copy paste it directly here, essentially. Save. And then here you just copy the URL of the Twitter company profile that you want to scrape. In this case, it's Marquetta. So you just copy paste that, etc. Make sure that the dash followers isn't included after because it doesn't require it it connects it on its own. Essentially, if you include the dash dot followers, you're gonna have an error. But if you just include the Twitter company page itself, it's gonna do it on its own. And then number of followers per Twitter account, leave this blank, because essentially you wanna scrape all, and then we'll call this Twitter scrape one, briefly put. And then launch settings, I'm sure you guys all know them, because we've covered them a million times in all the previous calls, but essentially all manually, et cetera. For, for, then, the, for all the people that just joined, uh, what Kiddo's doing now is just scraping Twitter followers and then enriching the data to retarget them on various platforms. So you go to any company's Twitter account, scrape their followers, uh, but what's the accuracy you'd expect to do? 50 to 60%. So 50 to 60% accuracy, and then you'll be able to message them via LinkedIn, email, um, Facebook, maybe Twitter, etc. Exactly. Then the... Um once that's done, essentially, you're going to have this screen where it basically picks up all the profiles and you're going to have a CSV, which is located here, which is Twitter scrape. Now, just uh, close this and close this and this. The data is going to look something like this at the end of the day because I've already pre-saved it from the previous scrape itself. So I'll just close this workbook. The initial data from the Twitter scrape is going to look something like this, essentially. So then that's there. The query, the error, if there is one, usually there isn't one. The timestamp, the profile URL, the screen name, and the user ID. So the user ID is directly from Twitter. Now, 
I'm not 100% sure, but maybe with this data, you can basically retarget them through Twitter ads, which is a possibility if they're not too strict with regards to their uh, custom audience, like restrictions, et cetera. Because I know that you could do it with Facebook, but now it became a lot more difficult. And then the uh, data set that we're working with here is essentially their name. You can see that there's a lot of names that generally don't, like they're, they seem like a bunch of crap to be entirely honest. So to filter those out, you simply select the actual column itself and then you add a filter and I might screw this up right now because last time I did it was two weeks ago. And then text filters, so contains, asterisk, space, asterisk. And then essentially you only pull up the names that actually have a space between them because it's one of the, it's one of the conditional rules with regards to any name. Now you do have a couple of other company profiles that might include three or four or six, et cetera. But essentially with this way, you're able to minimize the profiles with just one name, for instance, and capitalize on the ones with, let's say a first name and a last name by setting a conditional of the profile has to contain two words, a space and a space in between them, essentially. Then uh, you copy and paste that and you plug it into Phantom Buster into the LinkedIn profile finder. But before I head over to that, I just wanna head over to a, another interesting point, which is this one. Um, this app, so like this Phantom Buster application also scrapes their websites if they have one on the profile. And I think that 70% of the times, the people that would include the website are also key decision makers of the website itself. So at the end of the day, if you take these websites and then you plug it into, let's say, Hunter.io's uh, like bulk enrichment option, you could pull up their personal emails as well. And it's sort of like a dual scrape at the end of the day. But then this becomes a totally different thing altogether. But that's just a different angle that you could potentially work it on at the end of the day. And then it brings you their location, et cetera. So a bunch of data, essentially. Then um, what you do is you simply copy this. You open, the, uh, you open the LinkedIn profile URL finder. So then that's just another module of Phantom Buster. You click on setup. It doesn't require your cookie because what this does essentially is it does... I, Think, and I reckon it does a Google search based on the parameters that you give. You open this section here that says check template, and this will essentially load up this spreadsheet, which gives you the template of how to upload the data. Once you upload the data, you just copy paste it from the previous Excel sheet. You end up with something looking like this. You share it, you make it public, and you essentially plug in the URL, the share URL of this directly into this font, this module right here. So control C, control V and then save. And then once you run it, like indicate the name of the result file that you want to have, save, run, etc. And then essentially what you end up with is the f following data. You end up with this type of like data scrape at the end of the day. So you have and for the, uh, th this video is going to be recorded, everyone. So you could watch this whole thing go through the process step by step, pause, and repeat the same process as we just showed you quickly now. Exactly, and then essentially you end up with their LinkedIn profiles and their first name and last name and a description as well. Now this is metadata directly from Google, and this is the reason as to why I'm saying that it's probably taking the the data directly from Google search. But with an accuracy of 50 to 60%, it's not the best, but you could still do something at the end of the day. And that's briefly that at the end of the day.